Uh, Lord, lead us as we uh, learn from your word. Open our eyes and our hearts to see clearly what you want to speak to us. Amen. Today I will be sharing from the theme, going back to where it started. If you have played the game Chinese Whisper, you know how fun this game is. Uh, people go into a group and uh, one of the leaders comes and whispers a word to one person and the word goes round up to the last person. But it can be so interesting and funny how the word changes, how the word is distorted when you get it at the last person. To understand what the word was, you have to go back where it all started to understand the word. And so today from our sharing, we'll be answering the question, why do we need to go back where it all started? We are taking our reading from Mark chapter 11, verse 15 to 19, and this is what it says. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of, money, of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. As, and as he taught to them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this, and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the previous verses, before we read this passage, we read of Jesus entering Jerusalem in a triumphant entry. People are singing Hosanna to him. They're laying down their clothes and leafy branches just to give glory to his name. And then in verse 11, we read that he went to the temple and looked around and saw what was happening all around. And then we know that now where we start in verse 15, this is the next day when he goes back to Jerusalem. And when he reaches Jerusalem, we are told that he enters the temple courts. They are called courts because the temple was divided in about four courts. The first one was the court of the Gentiles, and then secondly was the court of women, and then thirdly was the court of men or the court of Israel, and then the fourth was the court of the priests. And so this selling and buying is all happening in the court of the Gentiles. You can just imagine how horrific this was. One writer and preacher, John MacArthur, goes on to give his description of how horrific this court of the Gentiles was. He says that it had been turned basically into a business place or a business center and he says the business that was happening here was selling and buying of animals and that there's one Passover when they took a record that about 260,000 lambs were slain. Can you just imagine how chaotic that place was to have about 260,000 um, Lambs, you could be asking, why didn't the people then sacrifice or, I mean, bring their own lambs to sacrifice? Why did they need to buy from the priests? Because possibly it was risky to bring your own lamb because it had to go through the priestly inspection. And it was to their benefit if they rejected your lamb because then you are going to buy from them an animal. And so they would charge you an exorbitant price. And then they skimmed off a huge percentage to give to the to the chief priests. And if your animal was rejected, some records say that they charged you 10 times the fair price. And so this is the kind of robbery that Jesus is talking about. They also talk about the dove or pigeon sellers because the people, uh, the poor people in the community were not able to buy a lamb so they bought doves and they sacrificed those. And they also talk about the money changers because we had many people come from distant places to come and celebrate the Passover. So they came with coins that had images on them, the Greek and Roman coins had images on them. And so the priests rejected them, saying that this was idolatry. So it had to be exchanged for the Jewish or the Tyran coins that were preferred by the, by the, by the priests in the, in, the, in, the, in the temple. And so we see all these chaos is happening in the court of the Gentiles. Remember I said we are sharing from the theme, going back where it started. And the question is, why do we need to go back to where it all started? Because first of all, we need to be sure we are still on track. 
I believe that where these people started from, the priests started from when they're selling animals and doing this money changing, they wanted to make it convenient to help the people worship God well. Because people came and possibly brought some lambs they didn't know had blemish and they were rejected. Or some people were coming from far places and it would only be convenient for them to buy the animal at the temple and from a priest, possibly a trusted person. But now as we go on, we realize that now it is no longer about the benefit of worship, but it is about the benefit of the priests. That's why we see in verse 18 that the priests and the teachers were even looking for a way of killing Jesus because he had got in their way. And it wasn't even his first time doing this. Even at the beginning of his ministry, three years back, he had cleansed the temple again. And so I will pose the question for us. How many things are we doing in the house of God that were meant to worship him, that were meant for the benefit of worship, but have now turned for the benefit of man? We know that there are songs that were meant to worship God that have turned now to being worshipping man. We know that pulpits that were meant to preach the word of God have turned out to be places of entertainment. We know that evangelism that was meant to turn men to God is now meant to turn men to a church. We know that churches that emphasize purity, now they mind a lot about numbers. And so I ask us to go back to where it all started. Paul writes in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, just to paraphrase that, our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, bought at a price to glorify God. But we know that nowadays as Christians, our bodies don't glorify God. There is a law of progression that has been stated in relationships, that it starts as simply as a handshake, and then it goes to a hug, and then it goes to just a peck on the cheek, and then it goes to a quick kiss, and then before you know it, it is going to a long, I mean, long time kiss, and even going beyond to even bed. That now Christians who always say that we abstain from sex before marriage, have turned to saying that we abstain from pregnancy before marriage. We know that people who are saying that I'm going to glorify God with my gifts, now are glorifying themselves. We know people in the city that started singing songs that glorify God, that started preaching messages with sound messages, I mean, a sound doctrine, but have now turned to singing songs that worship them, songs that please man, but not please God. I really ask us to turn back and go back to where it all started. Secondly, we need to go back to where it all started to be sure we are not a hindrance. I believe that as I explained to you, in the court of the Gentiles, where all this selling and buying of animals and money changing was happening, was the only place the non-Jews or the foreigners were allowed to worship God and ask questions about God to the priests. But you can just imagine that now the worship place has turned into a business place. The animals that were meant to worship God have turned to be a hindrance to the worship of God. It was not only a hindrance to the worshippers, but it became a hindrance even to the worship leaders, the priests, that now they no longer mind about leading in song and praying for the people and leading worship, but they are only minding about how much am I going to sell my animal, they are minding about counting the money, they are minding about keeping the money safe and balancing their books of accounts. We see in Acts chapter 6 that there was some uneven distribution of, of food and some things in the church, in the church. And that's chapter 6. And so the complaint was brought to the apostles. What they did was to summon the whole uh, group of believers and they asked them to choose seven people among them that would lead in serving at tables so that they would concentrate on their primary ministry, which was prayer and the ministry of the word. So they didn't allow serving at tables be a hindrance to their primary ministry. But how many things are we doing today in the church that have become a hindrance? That sometimes we are hindered by the voices we hear singing and the instruments. We mind so much about the eloquence and the methods the preacher is using and we hinder the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we mind so much about the lighting and the decoration in the church and we forget that actually God looks into the heart that we mind so much about building big auditoriums and having large numbers and we are missing out on the power of small group fellowship. I call upon us to go back to where it started, to track where the distortion has come in. Because the church of God, the house of God is a house of prayer and worship, not to what it has turned out to be today.
God have mercy and revive your church. I will close with a prayer from Psalm 139, verse 23. And this is what it says. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Try us and know our thoughts. And see if there be any grievous ways in us, and possibly even in the church. And lead us in the way everlasting. God bless you. Thank you.